now on 18 Eyewitness News. Construction crews continue to make progress on Clearwater Dam. Also, there's good news on gas prices for southeast Missouri. Plus, Ellington's Spring Fever Days Festival is this weekend. All of these stories and our cooler temperatures here to stay. Coverage you can count on. This is 18 Eyewitness News. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fred Dawkins, and here are the top stories that we're working on this hour for you. Construction crews continue to make progress at Clearwater Dam. U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Specialist Laurie Driver says currently a red clay blanket is being installed on the front of Clearwater Dam. And they're extending that clay blanket past the intake structure. That was a modification. And uh, then they'll, I think they'll do some rock work on top of that. The clay blanket will act as an additional water barrier. Now, driver says another modification has been added to improve the dam's appearance. The concrete work platform will be covered with dirt and seeded, and we're expecting all that to be all that work to be done by early fall. Driver says the final part of the project is work on the auxiliary spillway. She says although that contract has not been awarded, the work is expected to be done by next spring. And now Dustin Kopp is here with a look at our first forecast. Dustin, what's on tap? Good evening, Fred. Good evening, everybody. Temperatures are on the mild side right now. 71 in Festus and Potosi, as well as in St. Genevieve. A little warmer in Fredertown at 73. 74 in Piedmont and St. Or, excuse me, Cape Girardeau. And 76 right now in Poplar Bluff. Temperatures are going to continue to be on the mild side this evening. Partly sunny skies at 7 p.m. 70 degrees. Uh, 9 p.m. partly cloudy with 63 degrees and 57 by midnight. And partly cloudy skies continue. Tomorrow at the bus stop. Plenty of sunshine, temperature around 50 degrees, northwest wind about 5 miles per hour. I'll give you more details on your sunshiny forecast coming up later in weather. After gas prices across southeast Missouri increased to nearly $4 a gallon back in March, regular unleaded has dropped to around $3.60 a gallon. Now, according to senior petroleum analyst Patrick Dehan of GasBuddy.com, economic fears have driven down the price of oil and gas by extension. A bit of a break here for motorists as crude prices fall on concerns about the economy, especially here in the last few days. Crude oil prices have fallen about $8 a barrel, close to 10%, just on fear uh, that the economy is not uh, recovering at the pace that some had expected. DeHaan says typically there's a lower demand for gasoline during slower economic growth. While this may be temporary, he says our gas prices should stay right around where they are now. By and large, I do expect that over the course of the summer, at least in Missouri, I think the average price for a gallon of gas will probably average between 335 to as much as about 375 a gallon uh, for much of the summer. You can always find the lowest gas prices in your area by clicking on the Gas Buddy icon on froggy96online.com. Ellington Spring Fever Days Festival is this weekend. Eric Mansfield with the Chamber of Commerce says they're trying to make the event more family-friendly this year. We have a different kind of carnival. We don't have the traditional mechanicals. Most of ours are inflatables out of a company Springfield. We have a rock wall. We have an obstacle course. The Ellington Chamber of Commerce is also making Spring Fever Days easier on the wallet by offering an armband to cover all attractions on Friday and Saturday at a pre-buy price of only $14. Eric says last year's barbecue contest was such a hit, it's back and it's bigger. It's expanded to four meats for those carnivores out there with pork butts, ribs, uh, brisket and chicken, and it's being sanctioned by the St. Louis Barbecue Society this year. It's actually one of their competitive events. Eric expects that just like last year, folks will be able to sample some of the barbecue contest entries make at a nominal fee. The Missouri Department of Conservation will soon add 35 wild elk to the recently restored herd at Peck Ranch Conservation Area. The elk are scheduled to arrive May 18th. They'll join 31 adult elk transplanted from Kentucky last year and five calves born last spring. Peck Ranch is part of an elk restoration zone that covers parts of Shannon, Carter, and Reynolds counties. 
The new elk will be fitted with radio collars to monitor their movements. MDC has temporarily closed the refuge area at Peck Ranch until July 1st to minimize disturbances to the new elk and to the resident elk that are calving. And when we come back, we'll take a look at the street improvements going on around Farmington. That story is coming up only on 18 Eyewitness News. You're watching 18 Eyewitness News with Fred Dawkins, Dawn Arnold, Chief Weathercaster Dustin Kopp, and Jeremy Martin with sports. 18 Eyewitness News continues. Street and infrastructure improvements are continuing in the city of Farmington. Public Works Director Larry Lacey says crews are completing work on the sewer system near Wallace and Potosi Streets. We will start soon on work there on A Street between Doss and North Street. And the purpose of that storm system is to uh, provide for the drainage that will come off of Doss Street. We're going to be starting on the improvements on that soon also. Other planned improvements this spring and summer include repaving and adding sidewalks on Potosi Street, as well as creating a safer pedestrian crosswalk at Karst Boulevard and Potosi. A former Farmington license office employee is facing a July arraignment date on charges of stealing and forgery. 26-year-old Tiffany Denae Husky of Bonterre is accused of stealing more than $48,000 from the license office. Now, if convicted, Husky could receive up to 15 years in prison on the stealing charge and up to seven years on each of the forgery charges. A 2011 audit revealed that Husky had been stealing from the office by changing tax rates to reflect a lower amount of taxes due after the customer had already paid the correct amount. The fraud was tracked to Husky through her employee number. When agents interviewed Husky, she admitted to the fraud but thought she had only stolen about $1,500. In their investigation, the agents found 109 fraudulent transactions. Husky is currently free after posting a $50,000 bond on May 1st. A Poplar Bluff woman facing involuntary manslaughter charges will be back in court June 14th. 24-year-old Christine Aldridge appeared Monday before Butler County Circuit Judge John Bloodworth, who sent the June preliminary hearing. Aldridge is accused of being legally drunk when she went through a stop sign, slid through an intersection, and drove her car into the Black River back in April. While she was rescued by two bystanders, her passengers, 25-year-old John Phelps of Poplar Bluff and 29-year-old Jason Carrington of Malden, drowned inside the car. She's charged with involuntary manslaughter and driving while intoxicated. Aldridge remains jailed on a $50,000 bond. Still to come, the growing use of video games in medicine. Don Arnold tells us how athletic trainers are now using them to track concussions. That's next in today's Your Health. But right now, let's check in with Dustin Kopp. He's going to give us a check of our 18 Storm Tracker forecast coming up next. Now, here's your Storm Tracker 18 weather forecast with Chief Weathercaster Dustin Kopp. And welcome back. Plenty of sunshine for the next several days. And temperatures around the area are going to continue to be average for this time of year. And a chance of showers and thunderstorms is still in the forecast for Mother's Day. I'm sorry, mothers out there. Here in southeast Missouri, temperatures are in the 70s. 74 in Cape Girardeau, 76 down in Poplar Bluff, 73 right now in Ironton and Fredericktown, 71 in Festus and St. Genevieve. Here at the station, we have a current temperature of 72 degrees under a partly sunny sky. 72 is what it feels like out there. Current dew point 44 with 35% humidity and a northwest wind about 7 miles per hour. Wednesday is going to look nice. Plenty of sunshine, really can't complain through southeast Missouri, pretty much the Midwest. It's going to be a nice day here in southeast Missouri. Really, nothing too much to complain about. Clear skies tonight, low around 50 here in Farmington, 49 in Fredertown and St. Genevieve, as well as in Ironton, Potosi and Fredertown, a little cooler at 48, as well as in Van Buren, warmer down to our south in Piedmont at 51 and Poplar Bluff at 54 degrees. Tomorrow, 71 for your high, partly to mostly sunny skies. Northwest wind 5 to 10, continuing to warm up down to our south in 76 degrees around Poplar Bluff. 
74 in Piedmont and Cape Girardeau. A little cooler out to our north, around 70 degrees, 71, 72 in Festus. So for your next several days here in southeast Missouri, we're going to continue to see plenty of sunshine for the next several days, Thursday, Friday. 70 degrees for Thursday, 72 on Friday. Saturday looks partly sunny, high of 76, cooler on Sunday. Sorry, mothers out there. We're going to see that chance of a shower or a thunderstorm. High of 72 once again on Monday with partly sunny skies and another chance of showers. Move in the forecast on Tuesday with a high of 76. Another look at our weekend forecast here in southeast Missouri. 76 on Saturday, partly sunny skies. On Sunday, once again, another chance of showers and thunderstorms. High of 72. That's check of your storm tracker weather forecast. More details are located at froggy96online.com. Just click on the weather tab. Fred, back to you. This is Sports Zone, only on 18 Eyewitness News with Jeremy Martin. Lance Lynn was not at his best Monday night, just good enough for five scoreless innings and another victory. The young St. Louis right-hander, who only became a starter when Chris Carpenter went down, gave up three hits to become the Majors' first six-game winner, and the Cardinals held on for a 9-6 victory over the Arizona Diamondbacks. Rafael Fricall hit the 30th leadoff home run of his career for St. Louis, the first of five home runs for the Cardinals on the night. Carlos Beltran and Matt Holliday hit consecutive home runs to open the third inning. Then Alan Craig and David Fries homered to start the seventh after Arizona had scored six times in the sixth to cut the lead to 7-6. to six. Lynn is the first St. Louis pitcher to start the season with six wins since Bob Tewksbury in 1994. Jason Mott gave up a pair of singles in the ninth but no runs for his fifth save in six tries. The Missouri Attorney General's Office has warned the St. Louis Rams and the St. Louis Convention and Visitors Commission that the state plans to make public documents related to the proposed renovation of the Edward Jones Dome, including the May 1st plan from the Rams that has so far been kept secret. Attorney General Chris Coster sent a letter to St. Louis Circuit Judge Brian Hettenbach saying the state will release the documents by the close of business on Monday, May 14th. Hettenbach is overseeing a legal dispute about the records. Lawyers for the Rams and the CBC were also sent copies of the letter. The CBC and the Rams, as required by the team's lease for the Dome, have traded proposals on how to make the building a first-tier stadium. If the CBC cannot meet that standard by 2015, the team could terminate the lease and move out of St. Louis. The long wait for the sale of the St. Louis Blues is finally coming to an end. A group led by Blues minority owner Tom Stillman is expected to close its purchase of the club on Wednesday. Hall of Famer and former Blues captain Brett Hull is expected to be named to a management position under the new ownership. No other changes within the management staff are known at this time. Stillman, who is CEO of Summit Distributing in St. Louis, heads a group of local investors who are believed to be paying $130 million for a package that includes the Blues, the Peoria Rivermen of the American Hockey League, and significant interest in the Peabody Opera House. And Mizzou basketball coach Frank Haith has added another transfer to bolster his team. Highly touted Jordan Clarkson of Tulsa accepted a scholarship offer from Missouri after visiting there this weekend. Clarkson connected immediately with Mizzou's coaches and players and likes Haith's up-tempo system. It also helped that Tiger guard Phil Pressey is a longtime friend of Clarkson's who raved about his experience of playing under Haith. Clarkson is the fifth transfer from a major program that Haith has recruited to Mizzou for the upcoming basketball season. And that's a look at sports. We'll be back with today's Your Life segment right after this on 18 Eyewitness News. I'm Stacy Johnson. If you're heading off to college soon, best you start beating the bushes for some bucks. College scholarships. That's just ahead on Money Talks News. Do you see news happening in your neighborhood? Email us at news at kdkz.tv. 
Certainly a beautiful day across the parkland and southeast Missouri today, Dustin. You not could bad. not beat the weather. We've got a big event coming up this weekend down in uh, Reynolds County. It is Spring Fever Days. Mm -hmm. And can we look ahead to see what their weather is going to be like? This weekend is actually not going to look too bad for the beginning of the weekend. We're going to see plenty of sunshine on Saturday. Sunday, however, a chance of showers and thunderstorms. And like I said yesterday, I'm still trying to get that worked out to where mothers can go out and about and not have to worry about those showers and thunderstorms. All right, be a good weekend to go to Spring Festival uh, in Ellington. Also, mm -hmm. uh, take mom out if you get a chance yep. and uh, treat her to something nice, too. They deserve it. Dustin and I will be back at 10 o'clock tonight and again tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Until then, have a blessed evening, everybody. God bless you. Have a good night, everybody. News Watch is next. We'll see you tonight at 10.